So, here we are back at Agate back Village. It. It's time to finally purify Ralts. And so we regain Shockwave, which is kind of nice for this point. Sing, which is kind of meh. But I went through Mount Battle's first two areas just to get Ralts enough experience to level up once. All I need is one level. Also, you learn Calm Mind at only level 21. Here's the thing, though. Oh, I'm torn about this. So, Reflect is decent. Calm Mind is tempting. It's actually not as good in dull battles as it is in singles. And I kind of want to keep Sing because it is the only sleep move I have. I need to get rid of Reflect if I want Calm Mind. And Reflect is good team support. Uh, and great support for Ralt itself too. This is hard. I kind of feel like... I know this seems weird, but actually saying no to Calm Mind. I've tested it a little bit, and I honestly didn't find it to be that helpful in doubles. Reflect is probably going to be better overall. Also, immediately, Ralts evolves, which is why I wanted to level it up once. We have a Curlia now. It'll take a little bit longer for it to reach its real potential, though. Curly is still pretty meat, and you... <laughs> you know, I thought that would happen. Uh, actually, I'll say no to Calm Mind here. I'm so glad they greatly simplified the refusing moves process in Sun and Moon, because here it's like, are you sure you don't want to learn this? Are you sure you're sure you don't want to learn this? Anyway, I have a nickname in mind for this Curlia. I'm going to call her, because this is one of the few times where, during the main story, I've actually got a female Gardevoir. I'm going to call her... Now, this is actually a few um, things in one. It's partly from the wizard guest party member from Critical Role earlier on, but it's also partly because... She has the Trace ability. Trace copies the opponent's ability. So this also comes from Lyrebirds, because Lyrebirds are ridiculously good mimics. They can do things like copy chainsaws or camera flashes. So I kind of like that idea of giving her a name like that that sort of fits with that. And I guess we'll make a game of what crazy ability will Lyra have next? I'm going here, though, to the name rater, because I have a nickname that I have in mind for another Pokemon, too. So, uh, for my Brelu. There are a lot of mushroom-related names, but I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. Brelu is essentially a kangaroo. It's a mushroom kangaroo. So, I am going to name you... Ricky, after the kangaroo from the Zelda Oracle games. And also, partially because I thought of the name Rushroom at first, after the mushrooms in Breath of the Wild, but, um, hey, I... Got another Zelda reference in that was a little bit more appropriate, I guess. Yeah, I don't like always going with game references for my nicknames, but I'm actually really terrible at coming up with original names for Pokemon. It's partly why I don't naturally nickname my Pokemon most of the time, so... Yeah, normally I don't really like naming them game references. I like to have them sort of stand as their own, but um, some of these I like to have double meanings in them, like Lyra. But anyway... Now it's time to really go to Fennec City. We got sidetracked by minigames before, but we're not going to fall for their trickery twice in a row. So, hi there. You should have gone off to play at Relgan Tower forever. Nothing suspicious going on at all in this town. Ha, huh, I don't remember anyone the Mighty Enna last time. And you're talking about a uniform being too tight. Again, nothing suspicious going on at all. Ah, that cast forms turned into a Duskull. But there's still nothing suspicious going on at all. This guy is barring entry to the Pokemart. But still, there is nothing suspicious going on here at all. 
There's really weird, disturbing music in this place, but still, there is nothing suspicious going on here at all. Also, Delcaddy can now be purified. But there is still nothing suspicious going on here at all. These Ultra Balls are nice. A lot of people really remember this part of the game. Just the music, the, just the way they kind of subtly tweak the Phoenix City theme so it just sounds wrong. It's kind of cool. Also interesting how uh, we went from Fennec to Pyrite in the previous game, now we're going from Pyrite to Fennec. The TVs are still so showing news about Poker Spots, so nothing new there. Anyway, there is another item for us in this city, so I guess I should check that out. Hi there. Hmm, well if you're referring to the same mayor from Colosseum, he's gone away for a long time. But, there's actually a new mayor now, and she's probably referring to that one. If we try and go over here, we're actually blocked by this guy. So, Phoenix Stadium is no longer in use. A shame since it looks kind of pretty, but yeah, they've moved all their battles to Relgun Tower now. There's nothing for you behind that house, and hey, there's an Absol. And this guy says that he'll be making this place uh, his new home. Again, nothing suspicious at all going on here. Hi there. Have you seen anything suspicious now? Nah, nothing much is um, really happening that he's noticed. And this music still continues even inside the pre-gym. If we go up here to the class in session... Hmm, what kind of things? Well, Phoenix City teaches some interesting curriculum these days. Like this. And there's nothing much else we can do in here. For now though, let's try heading to the Mayor's house. And here is, um, the mayor's wife, it looks like. And she says things are boring around here. For some reason, she's blocking off these stairs. But, we've got a bit of a hint. If there was music, things would be less boring. Also, that's a device for playing music. Might not be obvious at first, but that's what it is. So, there's a reason why I visited there first, because the music that we need is actually over in this house. This house is one of the few places where suspicious things aren't going on. Actually, quickly I want to show off something. The Pokemon Center. Let's see what's going on in here. There is no one here, so no healing for us here. So let's check out this house now. There's a reason why I showed the Pokemon Center before, because if you talk to this man... Well, that's ominous, considering the other stuff that's been going on here. But we do have a healing point. It's these beds here. So how nice of this guy to offer us his hospitality. But there's also a shining object on the desk. One music disc. That's convenient. We need some music. So he lets us have that disc. Seems like it's a pop idol, popular with girls. Well, I guess that'll be the kind of thing that she'll like, so let's play it in the CD player over there. This is all just a slightly fetched quest thing just to get upstairs. But there's a reason we need to get upstairs. So, something kind of interesting as well, if you get the disc before you come in here, she'll actually automatically talk to you and start this conversation. So let's give it to her. Rumber of Love. If you've gone into the battle mode, you might recognize this song. I kind of like that. It's like the song from the menus exists in universe. And for some reason, she is completely mesmerized by that song, and will now let us go upstairs. And here, well, this is obviously the mayor's room. 
there's something sparkly on the floor. Before you pick that up, make sure you've got your team in order. So, I want Lyra out uh, in the front here. And I think I want Ricky in there as well. If I'm remembering this right. I think I do. We'll see. We, fi we find one Mayor's Note. I love this close-up with the protagonist looking really squinty and, and um, yeah, being like, hmm, something suspicious is going on. So we could kind of figure that already, but that's what's going on here. And a report that ends abruptly is never a good idea. And a note that ends abruptly is never a good sign. Ah, hi there! Yep, she was a peon all along. Don't know why this guy has Gardevoir and Resilia pictures on his wall, but anyway. Sign for peon, Exion. We're battling in the Mayor's house just like we were at the very beginning of Colosseum. Survivor and Snorunt. You didn't leave with Survivor last time. Maybe it is based on what you lead with, because uh, when I was practicing, I led with uh, Teddy Ursa, so she didn't use that. But, speaking of leads, we actually have a Shadow Pokemon lead. A Snorunt. And this thing loves to spam Shadow Wave, so uh, let's see if we can get rid of it quickly. I think I'll try Stun Sporing at first. And I'm going to go ahead and Confusion this Surviper, even though it might not do that much. Oh, hey, I'm the fastest thing on the field. That's kind of surprising. Because when I was using Orson uh, and Lyra before, Snorunt was outspeeding everything, was constantly spamming Shadow Waves. I had a feeling you'd be doing that. Oh, wait, no, I did not have a feeling you'd be doing that. I thought you'd go for Lyra. Okay, that's good, because that would have almost certainly been Shadow Wave. This thing loves to spam Shadow Wave, and it gets really annoying. Now, this might not one-shot the Survivor, because, yeah, Curlia's special attack is not that amazing. But let's see what we do here. Muck Punch is going to be not very effective against the Survivor, and I obviously don't want to use it against the Snorunt, so I'm just going to um, let things play out now. Like this. That did quite a bit. So it won't be that hard to weaken. Poison Tail. This is kind of a weird move. It only has 50 power, but it does have a high critical hit ratio and a chance to poison. Normal poison, though, not toxic poison. And I think it was Survi well, it was Survivor's signature move back in Gen 3, but I think other Pokemon learn it now, but I forget which two. Poison Fang also used to be kind of Survivor exclusive, but then Golbat got it. Speaking of Golbat, <laughs> there it is. Something else that I'd like a Psychic Type for. So I added uh, Lyra to my team at the perfect time, provided that she doesn't faint to the Shadow Wave. Oh, that barely did anything. And that kind of barely did anything. You know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and heal, because Lyra needs to catch up in terms of experience. She's a little behind the rest of the party. The battles here are a little bit tough at first, but there are a lot of fights coming up, and you'll generally end up pretty over-leveled just from this area alone, because of the sheer number of fights you have to do. Some for, some optional. I'll be going over that once we uh, get out of the Mayor's house, which is actually a bit of a challenge. Yeah, see, like I said, this thing loves to spam Shadow Wave. It's not really that much of a threat, though. And I probably need to heal Lyra again. Yeah, see, this is the problem with Curlia. Curlia is kind of weak for this point in the game. But Gardevoir is amazing, so it'll be worth the wait once we get there. Well, actually, once Curlia learns... Uh, okay, please don't teach me. That's not good. Once God of... Okay. Once Curly learns Psychic, though, it'll get a lot better. Happens only at level 26, too. And Golbat. Nope, Golbat's not down. Ah, oh, see, here's the thing. I could try and Mark Punch it, but it is four times resistant to fighting, so there's a chance that Mark Punch won't KO. I guess I'll go for it. Like I said, though, that is four times resisted, so we'll see if that works or not. Probably should have set up Reflect earlier. And I'll use your turn to throw a... Um, I'm going to be getting more in the way of Pokeballs soon, so I'll just go ahead and throw a Great Ball at you. Wow. 
One, two, three. Snorunt gets. Snorunt is kind of, uh, well, you'll see. It's a pure ice type, which are kind of rare, though that isn't a very good defensive typing. It also evolves fairly late at level 42, and once it does, it gains base 80 stats in everything. 80 is a little above average in Gen 3, but it's not spectacularly high. So Glalie is often a laughing stock in competitive battling, but for in-game purposes, 80 base everything is actually usable. Its ability in a focus is unlikely to help very much. In terms of starting moves, you regain Water Pulse on Purification, which means you don't have to use the TM for it, and you get Sing as your XD exclusive move. Like I've said before, it's better than Refresh, but it's still not great. Bite and Icy Wind are also decent special options. Icy Wind in particular is great because you don't need to use the move tutor for it, and as I always say, dropping the speed of your opponent's entire field is amazing in dull battles. Snorunt learns some fairly decent moves by level up. It gets Crunch at level 28. Even though it's not Stab, it does decent damage. And Ice Beam at level 34. There are many Pokemon that learn Ice Beam by level up, and those that do tend to learn it at very high levels, so this is kind of a unique niche Snorunt has. It'll also pick up Hail at level 42, which can help if you want to get Blizzard later, which will have perfect accuracy in Hail. For TM moves, you've got Light Screen, which I guess can be decent. Rain Dance is a nice option though, as it not only lowers your fire weakness, but it also increases the power of Water Pulse. And seeing as your physical attack is just as good as your special attack, you have access to things like Earthquake and Shadow Ball too. For Tutor moves, Body Slam, Double Edge, yeah yeah yeah. And also Glalie is one of the few Pokemon in this generation who learns self-destruct from the move tutor but not explosion. I'm almost positive Glalie does learn explosion in later generations, so don't waste your self-destruct move tutor on us. Overall, if you already have a water type and so don't want wall rain, Glalie can be a decent ice type option in this game. Okay, now come on, Muck Punch. Oh, you already have something else. Uh, yeah. Mighty Anna. Eh, okay, Muck Punch is probably not going to KO now. Actually, it did. That's 130 base attack for you. Though the Mighty Anna will definitely not go down in one shot now, thanks to the Intimidate. But at least both of us level up. This kind of isn't good though, because I need to Mark Punch you and I now I need to switch out Lyra, because otherwise she is pretty much going to be destroyed by that Mighty Anna. Especially with uh, that little HP remaining. I have noticed something though, at this point in the game, Orson is starting to look not all that impressive. And it won't be until level 30 uh, when he gets better, and that's not for a little while, which is kind of a shame. See, you'll have 130 base attack on Evolution, but uh, I already have 130 base attack on Breloom now, so... Like I said, Awesome's gonna look a little bit unimpressive. And something that I haven't actually pointed out before, that purple snag icon uh, next to your team, up of the Pokeball icons, that shows that you've snagged a Pokemon, obviously. It also basically means that if you lose the battle, you'll lose that Pokemon. But we've defeated our first Cypher Peon in this city, there will be many more. It is still kind of a freaky moment, just having them suddenly creep up behind you while you're reading that note. It almost feels like something out of a, not so much a horror game, but like a, a mystery game, maybe. Well, that's ominous. We'll see what she means by that later. For now, though, you want to heal before you go down the stairs. Trust me, I made that mistake when I was practicing this area, never again. You want to heal before going down the stairs. And I've probably already spoiled why. Uh, who I'm gonna eat? I'll, I guess I'll use... Yeah, I'll use Fish Slayer for this. Because the moment you go down these stairs... Hi oh, there, random dude. Yep, he's a Cypher Peon. So you're thrust into another battle immediately without a chance to go to a heal point. So, like I said, heal before you go down the stairs. Because these two fights in a row can actually be pretty dangerous. 
Especially if you don't see the second one coming, like I didn't do my practice run. Also, this fight also has a Shadow Pokemon. I, rem I mentioned a Shadow Pineco earlier in the game. Here's where it actually is. For some reason, I thought it was back in the lab. <laughs> and now Lyra is an Insomniac. This is also why I kept, uh, I kept Shockwave on Lyra. When I first practiced this, I went for... I immediately went to the Move Tutor and taught Icy Wind. But I feel like practicing this area, Shockwave is more effective in general in, uh, over here. There are a lot of things weak to electric. A lot of water types and a lot of flying types. Also, yeah, that Murkrow is kind of impressive for this point in the game. It won't be later on, but for, at this point... 80s in both offenses and over 90 in speed is pretty good. And that was probably unnecessary, but oh well. At least we got rid of you. The Pineco is mostly content to just stand there and spam a Shadow Blitz, which actually hits kind of hard. Which is a problem because I want Lyra to take out that Ariados, and if you decide to spam a Shadow Blitz on Lyra, we could have a problem, yeah, because that hurts her pretty badly. I might need to heal again, which is kind of unfortunate. I am kind of running low on Moo Milks, and I will want more of these before we take on the boss of this area. Like I said, I'll be talking more about how this area works in general later. Well, I was about to say I'm surprised you're the fastest thing on the field, but then I realized two things. One, I use an item on Kavana's turn. Two, Aridos is painfully slow. And thankfully, this is not Gen 7 Leech Life, so I don't need to worry too much about this. How are we? are both weak to Bug, though. I mean, Bug-type moves aren't all that impressive in this gen, but still. I think you just lost all the HP you drained. Okay, I'm actually kind of glad you went for Lyra there. Now I know that... Okay, I do have to double up on that Ariados if I want to uh, do something. And somebody is probably going to go down to the Pineco this turn. I'm hoping that... I, I know this feels mean, but I'm kind of hoping that it's Fish Slayer. I also hope this Crunch doesn't KO good. Because otherwise the confusion would have gone to the Pineco, and if it had crit the Pineco, that might have been bad. Unless you have more Pokemon in the back, you probably do. I need to pay more attention to that. So, Ariados is down. And no, you don't have any more Pokemon in the back, but whoever you're hitting is probably going to go down. Well, at least she gained the experience from the Ariados, so that's kind of fine by me. I also like that Great Ball sending out animation. I need... Yes, I need a status user, obviously. Almost forgot that I'm trying to catch this thing, not knock it out. And... Speaking of which... Hmm. Uh, uh, should I go for a Water Pulse? I mean, I don't want to crit, but... Let's just go for that. Please don't die. Okay, that wasn't a crit, that's good. And even if it was a crit, it wouldn't have carried it. I am finding Thunder Wave a little bit more useful than Breloom's Stun Spore, because it has better accuracy. Okay, good. The defending Pokemon is now paralyzed. Is that going into... Well, that was a crit, and it still only did half. I'm gonna switch you out, because there's no experience to be had in this fight anyway, so it doesn't really matter who I use. And I'll just body slam you because it's not really going to do much, especially not with my modest nature. And I still find this animation really weird. I think I'll try and catch it now. Okay, here's another Shadow Blitz incoming. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think I may be able to catch it now. So let's go for another Great Ball. I'm using a lot of these, but there is a reason for that. Because let's just say I won't really have much of a problem with Great Ball stock soon. One. Two. Three. Pineco gets. Pineco is mainly notable for its evolution, which was already a usable Pokemon in Colosseum. However, this Pineco has access to a few options that Colosseum's Foratress never got, namely Spikes and Counter. And both are actually great moves for it, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Pineco itself is a pure bug type, and won't evolve into Foratress until level 31, which is a little bit off. However, once it does, 
Fortress becomes a defensive behemoth with a fantastic bug steel typing. Leaving it with only one weakness. Sure, it's a huge weakness, but if you have something on your team to cover fire types, Fortress can be pretty much indestructible. It's also not terrible at attacking physically either, though it is very slow. Pineco will regain Pin Missile on Purification, which is sadly the best bug stab you have, which isn't saying much. You'll also regain... Well, Refresh isn't terrible on a more defensive Pokémon, but it's not the best XD exclusive move. And I already pointed out Spikes and Counter before. Both of them are excellent on Fortress. Sadly, you don't learn very many moves by leveling up. You could pay the move relearner for self-destruct, but you get Explosion anyway at level 39, so there's not much point. Explosion is devastating in this game, since it calculates damage based on half of the opponent's defense. If you have something like an Aggron as your partner, you won't be taking much damage from it either. You'll just need to keep a good stock of revives. You'll also get Double Edge at level 59, but that's a bit too late to be worth it. For TM moves, I'd focus more on defensive options. Toxic helps to stall things out, as does Dig and Protect. You also have access to both Reflect and Light Screen for team support. And Earthquake is not a bad option, seeing as your attack is decent. For Tutor moves, Body Slam is nice to have both damage and utility, while Double Edge is there if you don't want to wait until level 59. Self-Destruct I don't recommend since you already learn Explosion, and Swagger is another debilitating option. Overall, if you want a defensive Pokémon, you really can't do much better than Fortress. And access to Spikes gives it something that it desperately wishes it had back in Colosseum. And so, that's the Mayor's House cleared out. We've only just barely made a foothold in the Taken Over Phoenix City, though. You seemed oddly gleeful for a villainous team member being defeated. And he just vanishes. So back to this music, and then this happens. This kind of diffuses the tension of this moment a little bit. This was what they were saying when it came to, um, delivering the letter to Justy not being that helpful. Which Justy is the right one! Although, looking at this, it's pretty obvious who these Justies really are. So, none of them are the right one. Yeah, you should be able to tell who these people are. So their job is to scatter and deflect attention away from the place that you already gave away is important. And they all walk off. So, here's the hilarious thing about this. The Justy Gang, all of them are optional. If you want to progress with the main story, they stupidly revealed the only location that's actually important in this city, the pre-gym. Go in there, and that'll progress things. You don't need to fight any of the six Justy imposters at all. But, I'm gonna fight them all anyway, just for the sake of, um... I don't know, completeness. You do get something for beating each Justy imposter. However, you'll still be able to access the items even if you don't fight them. It's pretty funny, but yeah, they're all optional. So I'm gonna go ahead and heal here. Now, there are a lot of trainers to fight in this place. Most of the random people here are actually Cypher Peons in disguise. For example, uh, you know what, before I fight you, I'm gonna go for... I'm gonna go for Lavatine here. For example, nobody in Phoenix City had an Absol before. So obviously, this guy is a Cypher Peon. Now, originally, I wasn't planning on fighting everyone in this town, because if you do, you end up a little bit over-leveled. And then I realized how high-level the boss of this area is. The peons in this town aren't tough, and, with, and none of them have any Shadow Pokémon apart from the ones that you're forced to fight. So... Oh, that's kind of funny. You've now been hoist by your own batard. That Magnemite cannot switch. But, yeah, also, I can try out my new Fire Blast. Mm. But... Yeah, none of the many Shadow Pokemon problems you're forced to fight. The boss at the end of the Taken Over Phoenix City, though, is very, very dangerous. And you actually will need to be as high level as you can be for him. 
So, I actually would recommend fighting everyone. I might not show fighting everyone on camera, though. I will be showing all of the Justy Brothers, though. And I will be showing one other trainer here. Because what they do is kind of unique. Also, there's another reason why I like having Shockwave. I mean, not so much for the Puchiana, but more for the Pokemon that just got sent out. Raw. Okay, who's getting switched out here? Ah, uh, dang it. Well, if you send out Flaffy... Oh. That's a shame. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, let's just, um... Uh, hmm. What do I do here? I think I will... Let's see how much this does to a resistant Pokemon, because it's probably still going to do a lot of damage. I mean, it might not KO, but still, 120 power this early in the game. Yeah, it almost one-shotted, and that's not very effective. The issue with Fire Blast, though, at least for main story play, is that its PP is terrible. So, you will need to watch out for that. You can run out of PP pretty easily. You'll need to take trips back to healing points frequently. And a nice touch here is, these trainers actually use the Pokémon that you saw with them on the overworld, so this guy actually does have an Absol. Ah, uh, poor Absol. Absol became a lot better in later games, but here it's just... It has an enormous attack stat, but just very few good physical moves to use. Plus, no Super Luck either. Super Luck was pretty fun. So yeah, let's see what this Absol ends up doing. That barely did any damage, I'm kind of surprised. Bite. Yep, that is special, and Absol's special attack is terrible, so... Did not do very much damage. And, you know what, there's a healing point right behind me, I'm just going to Fire Blast you again. Getting pretty lucky with my Fire Blast hits though, I'm surprised. Yeah, you can see the kanji a little more obviously in XD's Fire Blast animation than you could in Colosseum, but... I still think it looks pretty cool in these games. I kind of like it better than how it, how it looks in um, the newer 3D games. But this town will not fall to Cypher on our watch. Thankfully, there are no Justy Impersonators in here. Now, there's actually kind of a cool thing about the Justy Impersonators, though I might talk about that next time. Because we'll see. Here, there is one person that I definitely want to battle. Also, this kid here is not an imposter, so don't worry about that. <laughs> he does have some pretty funny dialogue, though. And the one blocking the stadium won't move. This guy, though, beating him is very much worth your while. So, who am I going to use for this? I really forgot what he uses. I guess I'll just go with Orson. Actually, now I think about it, I seem to remember you using water type, so let's go for Flaffy. I could be wrong about this, but uh, let's try. This guy is a pretty polite Cypher member, though. He's actually offering us something. But we have to beat him first. Also, Cypher Peon Cap'n? What are you, someone from Animal Crossing? Actually, wait, no. You are not the fight that I wanted um, Electrotypes for. Oh, well. Volbeat and Spoink. Like I said, nobody has any Shadow Pokemon here except for the Forced Fights, but it's a good idea to beat this guy because... Yay, I traced a useless ability! Although, try to picture Lyra just uh, radiating light now. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Anyway, let's see. I think I'll try and just take out the Volbeat. Thief, that's kind of weird. If that hits Lyra, you might notice something kind of funny. Well, apart from the fact that it was a critical. For some reason, Thief can't steal your items in, um, this game, if it's used by opposing trainers. Although that light screen is a very bad thing to have going up. Because it means that I'm barely going to be doing any damage at all to this Volbeat, and that is annoying. I'm probably going to have to switch Lyra out here, because I'm going to need some physical power to smash through that. Yeah, let's go for another Thundershock, and I'm going to... Even though I could use Body Slam, it will probably still not do very much. Let's go for Awesome. Because everything here is resistant to Knock Punch, so... Ricky wouldn't really do that well. Tackle! Yeah! At this point in the game, you're using Tackle. 
At least you don't have anything like Signal Beam, because that would have been pretty painful. And also Otis Loof. Yeah, that's an amazing move. Not really all that good most of the time. It just ignores the effects of evasion increases on the opponents. I mean, admittedly, it's kind of a cool concept, like using Oda to sniff out, for example, with double teams, which is the real one, but it's not a very useful move most of the time. Although, I think it does let you hit ghosts with normal type moves, or did they only add that later on? Because I know that, um, I know that... Also, there's Psywave, kind of a weird move that does a random amount of fixed damage uh, up to, I think, 1.5 times your level, but it can do as little as half your level as well. But what I was saying was, uh, what's that other move again? Foresight, yeah. That lets uh, fighting type moves hit ghosts uh, pretty, um, it's pretty much done that since it first uh, appeared. But I'm not sure if Otis Link's effect was added later or if it also lets you hit ghosts. And yep, it's Volbit and Illumise. Shame these two don't have any kind of abilities that increase their power when they're paired up with each other. Oh great, going for Quick Attack, the time-wasting move. Although I wish I had priority, because then I could just take out that Volbeat. You will not take my Soothe Bell. The Soothe Bell is off limits. Yeah, in a lot of Pokemon games, Thief actually will steal your item if it's used by an opposing trainer, but you get it back at the end of the battle. I guess here it m would make sense for Cypher to keep the item, and that would be pretty terrible if you gave your Pokemon something that's permanently missable. Another Surviper! What is it with the evil teams and Surviper? Because Team Plasma in Black and White 2 used Surviper a lot as well. And Illumise didn't get to do much, apart from that one time-wasting attack. Whalema. Okay, yeah, right. You did have something water type. I thought I remembered that, but yeah. I'm going to need to Thundershock you, and... Uh, let's go for Return, but I'm probably going to faint before I get a chance to use it. Let's see. Yes, yes I am. The AI does have a pretty good sense of target priority in this game, I will give it that, but sometimes it's a bit of a derp when it comes to um, certain moves. I could go for Lyra here, but she's probably going to go down to Poison Tail, so I think I'm going to send you out. I shall destroy this snake with fire! Oh no, roll out. Well, the first roll is not going to do very much. I love how Realmer actually rolls when it uses rollout. I didn't, um, I'd forgotten about that. But let us zap this Whalmer, and yeah, I had a feeling it would do about half. So, one more shot required. Oh, wait, you actually had Light Swing up. That means that this probably would have done more. Nope, wait, I have wrong Pokemon, and I will Fire Blast you. You don't have Light Screen up! Hey, I I've hit 4 for 4 Fire Blast. That's pretty impressive by my standards. Oh yeah, the Call Command helps with Fire Blast quite a bit as well. You just Call once and you've probably got perfect accuracy with that now I think about it. Or at least near perfect accuracy. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit stronger. Yeah, hitting a little bit harder. I'll need to go back to the bed soon. But first, let's zap a Whalmer. There is a reason why I did this. But it's not an item that this guy will reward you with for beating him. Because beating Cypher P on Cap'n will give you... <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, it'd be really annoying if opposing trainers could actually use revives during battle, but anyway. With him gone, we can access the Pokemart now. There's no one else in here but the shopkeepers. But uh, yeah, they didn't seem to realize what was going on. So from here, remember how I said before that I wouldn't need to worry so much about Great Balls? We can also buy Ultra Balls here too, which is pretty cool, but at the moment I think Great Balls are sufficient. I'm going to buy a whole bunch of Great Balls. I'm going to buy... Uh, let's buy as many as I can uh, can buy. Oh, you can buy Poker Snacks here too. You can also go upstairs and they sell some other items, but they're not items that will really help you directly right now. Also, this guy was napping on the job. Yes, it's quiet here because you've been taken over by Cypher. But yeah, these are all vitamins. Don't really need those now. Not like they're going to be that helpful at this point. But yeah, you want to beat that guy because he gives you access to the Pokemon. Or you can just leave town and buy stuff at, uh, at another town. But uh, where's the fun in that? I'm going to go back and heal now. 
There is, though, one more battle that I'd like to show here, at least. Where are you? You! How dare you impersonate Wes's friend running around Fountain Man? You get back here! Run around Fountain Man, get back here! You! Imposter! I shall- uh, no, I'll just hit him off the other side. How dare you- <laughs> Well, you're certainly doing a good job of impersonating him, I'll give you that. Can I catch you now? There we go! Yep, he's an imposter. And you can probably tell which Pokemon he'll be using. Yep, that Duskull that was following him is a Pokemon that he actually uses. I still like that, it's just a pretty cool touch. And I think I have a pretty good party for this fight too. Fistlayer will deal with the Duskull, Lyra will zap the Corphish. I doubt anyone's going to be using any ground moves, but um, I guess um, if you use like Mud Shot or something, I don't know. Don't know if this will one-shot the Duskull, let's see. Actually it did, good. And Lyra's now up to the same level as the rest of the party, although they're gonna, all going to be 30... They're all going to be 24 soon. Quillfish, also something good for Lyra to be fighting. One, two, three! I still love those animations, even though um, Curly is not that strong of a Pokemon. Wow, nice one-shot there. Yeah, see, Fish Slayer is already almost level 24. And I guess I can crunch you and confusion you. Hard. Both moves I have aimed at you are special. That's not going to do anything. I'm. S it's still annoying, though, that I don't have any physical moves for Fish Slayer yet, because her attack is way higher than her special attack, and I'm not really getting to use that. Might either teach Double Edge or Earthquake later. Earthquake might be risky, though, with my other team members. Unless Lara can just happen to trace an in... Trace and levitate at exactly the right time. Yeah, see, look at that. Look at only 33 special attack. I'm still doing pretty good damage with Crunch, though. But yes, you have been punished. How dare you impersonate running around the Fountain Man. I think his name is like Dash or something, but anyway. And he's gone entirely. Oh, wait, one more battle that I want to do. You. You tried to sidetrack us with minigames before, now we know you have an ulterior motive. Yes, your cover is blown, you better be afraid. It's time to drive you out of this city. Admittedly though, I have to thank you. Rogam Tower is pretty entertaining, and I do like Battle CDs and Battle Bingo. But now, I must destroy you. Sudowoodo is kind of impressive at this point in the game though. I know I say that a lot, but... It's just, like, it is true. And we also have the perfect party set up for this one. Ah, uh, if only that was Gen 5 sturdy, that would be great. But anyway, Water Pulse you and Shockwave the Clamp Pearl. That Clamp Pearl probably doesn't have Deep Sea Tooth or a Deep Sea Scale. I thought that wouldn't KO though. I don't think this will KO either, although I could be wrong. Yeah, Shockwave is decent at this point, but you'll want to replace that with Thunderbolt later on. Critting a Kavana, even though, I mean, for how low power Clamp has, that's actually kind of impressive. Don't hit Kavana, please, that would be painful. Actually, hitting Lyra is equally painful, we both have pretty bad defenses, but Kavana has even worse defenses. Oh, and you only have two Pokemon anyway, and I'm faster than both of you, so this is already over. You did not put up a very good fight. I am disappointed in the one who gave me all those battle CDs. And now, one, two, three twirls, and you are zapped into oblivion. Curlia does have some pretty good animations overall. I like its fainting animation too, although I, mean, I know it seems cruel to say that I like a Pokemon's fainting animation. <laughs> well, thanks for that, but uh, it didn't help. One thing that I want to show though, if you talk to this guy, He's actually not an imposter, surprisingly. This lady is an imposter, though. And I might actually fight her off camera. Oh! 
Oh, I just barely had enough HP to survive that. Nice. And this guy with the Mighty Anna is obviously also an imposter, so let's fight him. Yeah, those comments about the outfit kind of gave you away. That and the Mighty Anna, obviously. And with that, we should have dealt with every, well, all of the imposter peons outside that we can deal with now. Because the lady over here isn't an imposter. So, I think I'll leave things here for now, and next time we'll be fighting the Justy Gang. So, prepare for trouble next time.